Hello everybody, this is Band of Badgers. I put the wrong camera on. There we go, because nothing ever goes smooth. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is Band of Badgers. Uh, <laughs> I'm Dave, your host, and not the person who pushes the buttons all the time, um, honestly. And Steve, as co-host, as always, partner in crime. How you doing, Steve? All good. Yeah, I'm great. Well, Thank um, you very much. He's, wa he's waving. That's enough. And with us, over there, <laughs> finger pistols, is Ian, the Dragonborn oh! father himself. Hi. I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm doing that. It's it's a bit strange, uh, but I love it. But welcome to our uh, game room tours series. This is third or fourth one of the series. I have no idea. I've lost the plot now. Uh, it's, but it's yeah, the we're... third. It's the third. There we go. It's the third. Um, it's, it's, I, I'm only thinking that because I know what is still to come. We've we've got a load of bits and pieces uh, booked up, which reminds me, um, if you, yes, you, you. The one who's listening right now, not Ian, not him, not him, but you, you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for doing that. Remember to like and subscribe if you're watching this live. Bring us your questions. Put your questions in the chat room now so that we know, or, or as soon as you can, basically, as soon as you can, so we can throw them up on the screen and we can ask those questions to boo, 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 Ian. But if you, says last son, JT, me, yes, maybe you, <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you, if you have a gaming room at home and you'd like to invite us over to take a peek through the keyhole and have a have a nose around, let us know. Get in touch because we love doing these things. People have absolutely gone nuts for this stuff. Um, and everyone likes to be nosy what everyone else has got so they can be jealous of it and uh, just miss out on it all. So uh, I, I do actually have a serious question. Go ahead. When do we see your room? Yeah. Yes. This is the room. <laughs> this is the room. This is a box room. I can move this far forwards and this far back, and and I'm touching the sides. I mean, that is a window. There you go. Look. So that's that's my one way out, and the door, the doorknob is right there. So that's the room. I'm um, getting you. You you'll get this reference right, Andy Peters. Yes. In the broom cupboard. Is, that, broom that's cupboard. the vibe. Yeah. This is it. If I have Gordon the Gopher, just it's just I'm gonna freak out. <laughs> or Rod and Rat is probably what I've got a few. Um, so yeah, touch the side <laughs> as always. <laughs> so without further ado, because time is going to be heavily, heavily limited. Yeah, um, Ian, Hi. Dragonborn Studios is absolutely uh, uh, fantastic, phenomenal. What you've what you've created. You're based here in the UK. You're down in Cornwall. Uh, right by the coast, fantastic location. You have uh, two ongoing permanent streams, which is the painting stream where you do with Warrior Prince, really, Richard, Ooh. painting the monsters manual, absolutely brilliant. But also, you have uh, a fairly new ish um, Starfinder 1E stream, yeah. which is fantastic because we've seen the table, the gaming table, the, the camera rig, the mics. All the miniatures, the minis, and everything that goes into it. It is absolutely nuts. So for the very first time, hopefully for the very first time, we're going to get a sneak peek behind the scenes yeah. and uh, see what all this is around. So enough of me waffling. Throw up yeah. the questions, audience. And Ian, where do you want to start? I mean, this place is massive. Well, I guess we... Right, wait, mm, I think it looks bigger than it is. And right now you can only see one of the backboards. Now I'm going to pull the camera down and it's going to make a loud noise and people are going to go, ah, my ears. And that's absolutely fine because I won't be able to hear it. So um, <laughs> I guess I'll start with turning my camera around really because uh, that's, right. that's what I have to do. Uh, let's grab that one there. It's weird. I'm not used to doing this on the phone. Usually I'm on the computer over there. So uh, I'm a little bit at odds doing this this way around. Back camera. So I'm actually going to unplug my phone and then trip over my own things and then yeah, i'll guess we'll start with the way we come in so the actual we, room itself <laughs> we can already see a sneak peek at the table which looks phenomenal and we'll get to that we'll which get is to the table we'll save we the best for last yeah here so i guess we start with where dragonborn industry started for me which is actually this little set of tables over here and in um, the star trek chair yeah yeah it was, Facebook Marketplace for free, and it reclines, and I can sit in here and pretend I'm working, and whoop, yeah. Um, nice. Obviously, I started out making dice for Dragonborn Industries, which was my whole, which is a bit of a mess at the moment, sorry. Uh, 
thing because I wanted a new focus, a new hobby, and to help with my mental health. And that's turned into the start of Dragonborn Industries. And even things like now that we've done or are in the process of doing the dice for uh, Midnight Tower, which that's their current dice. Wow, mode. fantastic. So we've is got that what it is? What is that? So that is a pressure pot. Uh, it's the one key piece to making sure you have good dice. But every right. one of those is an individual dice mold. For example, that one is a D12. Yep. And I'm doing the dice individually because it's easier to get really good dice that way. It's a bit more costly, but I wanted their dice to be really, really good for yeah. their kicks. That's so, so cool. Actually, Tuesday through Friday, I spend most of my time here where I have this lovely... BD1 from Warrior Prince 3D, which yep. is a life-size BD1. And then I sit here and craft dice, where we've got the dice making area, and then we have the dice polishing area, which is, again, done as cheaply as possible. It's quite literally like seven pound yep. pottery wheels and a box with loads of foam bits around it to make sure we don't get any splashes because you can see them there. Yeah, It's a messy hobby. Because realistically, we don't want to go going over the 3D printers, which is another part of the business for wow. making die and some miniatures and stuff. But um, so that's sort of where it all began. Realistically, I was already playing D and D, and I had some minis and a few bits and bobs. But when yeah. I realised I wanted to turn this into more me, that's the workstation, really. But I guess I'll just go round the room because the room itself. I've been very privileged to use here where I live. And when the collection was originally, I don't know if you can see right over in the corner, the yep. bookcase over there, that is what originally held my entire D and D collection. I sort of outgrew so, it. <laughs> we have a, we have a question from the geeky Phoenix. Ah, uh, the question is, how did you choose the theme of the gaming area? So, actually, for me, it's a... At the moment, it's sci-fi, because I'm mainly running a Starfinder stream live in person here around this table. However, I would like to be running Pathfinder and D&D &D streams as well. So yep. these backboards here that we've got for the set are actually double-sided. And although this side hasn't been finished yet they are going to turn into one big mural around the back of the players as if it was yeah. viewed from the top of a wizard tower. That's nice. Yeah. So although this board's been moved over here for the time being, yeah. Tamsin, who plays Calix on the stream, it doesn't really, you can see the bird down there in the mountains, but because I'm right up against the wall, you can't see it, has designed the entire set to look on camera like one continuous room. Cool. Which it, yeah, is, it is fantastic. I mean, we yeah. you've you've come on uh, on a uh, loads of our shows with these backdrops up, and it looks amazing. They really are. Uh, well, I will take that compliment because I'm very proud of the sci-fi side. Because yeah. I would say I'm not overly an artist of that kind of nature, but I was uh, pretty happy with how they go. But there's room for expansion on them. But, but that's yeah, I guess... you say you're not an artist, but you, you definitely are a crafter because. Yes. When when you get to the other wall, I want to talk to you about your your thermite grenades because you can talk to us about it how you made them. But I'd like to get on the stream because I think they're great. Well, I can go across there now if you'd so like. I'm just looking at this wall here where we've got the lovely badges. Hey. And I love the way you framed it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it uh, came out of my bag after um, the first dragon meet, and I realised I'd crunched it up, and I was like, no. So I put it in a frame, and. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's easy. You're not an artist. Show off the paint job on the table. I will, because that is the actual centre theme of the table is the Great Wheel, which is all of the planes of existence. But Zizi, actually, I'm due to put your artwork up just behind the ship here, because this wall here is where I put anybody who's done artwork for me, like my Fizzwiz artwork. Yes, Fizzwiz. The Leviathan artwork that people have done for me, and any character sheets that I've got from completed campaigns, like Fam from the Alien campaign. That we did with <laughs> and yeah it's um so. yeah so that's like a bit of pride there and yes easy i'm going to be putting that onto the wall because i adore fan art and the fact that you've done it is incredible that was probably one of my first 3d prints in terms of an airship from a kickstarter which is still one of my all-time 
favourite prints that I'm dying to get to playing that as 5e, but I want the set to be finished. Yeah, that is amazing. And uh, yeah, some more of the bits here. Oh, you're scanning really saying that they'll scan it in for you. I will happily, happily take one of those uh, scanned because, yeah, I want to get it up on the wall. Uh, and I guess I have to come across to the other side of the board, really. So this is some of the fantasy terrain that we have for our D&D and our Pathfinder games, which hopefully we'll get to streaming at some point soon and not be just a home game. Mm -hmm. And then these are sort of like my show pieces, realistically. And they're all modular, and you can go in slide them and take photos wow. of minis and do stuff like that. And they actually do make for really good uh, backdrops for photos for minis. And once more, we've got the old... Are these, with... these ones that you've 3D printed? Yeah. So they're, they're really good. Yeah. So I think these ones are all by STL. No, sorry. Uh, ooh. I've forgotten the name of the company. I'll, I'll find that so it can go in the comments. But they are really good. And it was a Kickstarter called The City of Firwood. Right. Then these I made out of foam. Well, which was you, my hold first... on, hold on, rewind, rewind. You say you made them out of foam. Yeah. So uh, wow, that is literally cardboard and foam that we then. That is really good. We need we need to get you a, a job in like doing stuff for movies or something. I don't know. Well, that's kind of my wife's job, really. She does costume and stuff for film and TV. <laughs> you, got, you, should be, you should be doing like mini props. I probably like should get into that because um, I think I'd enjoy it, actually. Um, uh, I, I see some whiskers cool. there below. You've got the Icewind Dale. Yeah. Uh, so paper mold, paper things. I love those. I think they're really, really fun. And I wanted to get them because Icewind Dale is probably one of my favorite module books. But then I found a company called Acid House Terrain, which also do paper terrain. Oh, and terrain. yeah, yeah it, again, completely modular. You can go inside them. You can build them up to be like city walls and stuff like that. And actually, when you combine that with things like with yep. stuff, it makes for really, really immersive terrain. And I think for me, with Dragonborn Industries, that was one of the big plays that I've always wanted, which was to be as immersive as possible. Yeah, and that's something we really, really believe in when it comes to tabletop gaming. So, yeah, that's sort of the fantasy shelf. But up here is wow. what we've done so far on painting up the monster manual. And this is this is wicked. This is, oh, there's the beholders. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which you guys were part of. I know. Yeah, some, some more shows together. But that's where it started with the Arakokra, yeah. and then. The latest one, which is Lord Soth, who is which probably looks, hiding behind there. Amazing. Somewhere. Yeah, the Death Knight looks amazing. And that was my original GM screen. Oh, That's wow. Cool. Yeah. And that was quite literally, uh, I think it was five pounds on Facebook Marketplace for an old Fisher Price castle. So yeah, I yeah. took it, I stuck some foam on the back of it to make dice towers, and then painted it up. <laughs> yeah i'm in love with that and i thought it was the perfect backdrop for mine and richard's show yeah so that's what that is yeah, cool. which is hopefully getting a live show this year yeah i think i think it deserves it so we start moving into sci-fi territory yes so obviously we have the starfinder stream at the moment and I've been wanting to do this for so long because Starfinder is my favorite setting. And there are companies like Games Art by Philip and um, Second Dynasty who do these ships, which again is modular terrain, which when you can give players a dungeon <laughs> that they can <laughs> go through. A dungeon that... they can play in and see. and, and yeah, Exactly that. And it's been one of these things that I'm a big sci-fi nerd, and I love playing, especially like Aliens with you guys and stuff like that, that I wanted to bring that to the tabletop, because we didn't have that for so long. We had the D&D stuff coming through from like 2017, but we didn't have the Starfinder stuff or the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. And now, especially with 2E on the way, I was like, we can do this. There's enough people on my mini factory and on Thingiverse, and especially with like uh, this set of buildings 
is all they're, from they're really good i love these they're from saucer men studios and they are so blade runner dystopian city like the noodle yeah. bar yeah i adore it so for me it was a no-brainer to run starfinder and use guys like this and uh yeah, it's crazy that like picking it up as a hobby has now become what's hopefully the start of a regular stream for many years to come. Let's let's just go back up to um, to, to the buildings, right? And yep. then zoom back in, right? They all look really good, but most of the fact that they look really good is they they've got really good paint jobs on them, like that not rat where you've got like the the, the flame <laughs> effect on the on the yep. on the letters. Uh, so everything that you've painted is awesome. Yes. I will take the compliment and nom, 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 because, yeah, um, I have, everybody gets imposter syndrome, and sometimes you paint something and you're like, I'm fucking amazing. Other times you paint something and you're like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> and I knew that with these, I really wanted to get those, like, OSLs going on the Yeah, get the, get the, neon, like the neon stuff. Yeah. So I was ended up like spending a lot more time hyper fixating on stuff like this so that I could offer that immersion to the players. Yeah. And yeah, it was um, really, really fun to do. And like, even like 3D print fails, we try and find a way of incorporating those into a new building or terrain in some way. Because I, I try, try not to waste any plastic. I love, the way. I love yeah. the way you've actually got like the reflection on the glass window there. Oh, thanks. You just painted it on. I love yep. it. It's, Attention uh, to detail. Superb. Thank you very much. I will take the compliment. But this this bit of the cupboard, hopefully my players aren't watching. Ooh. So look away, here, players. Look away. This is just for us. They're, they're all busy down in the house. I know that. Cool. This is my secret cupboard from them, where there are things in here that <laughs> they could be encountering, or that I want to keep a surprise when they get to the table. And uh, although it means I don't get them on show for a while, there's a few things that have already hit Instagram. So things like the spider bots. Yeah, that looks they good. hit a while ago, and um, I had a lot of fun with these because they were a free file from Thingiverse, and then I mixed them up with some things from uh, Second Dynasty to try and create nice a more immersive bad guy, essentially, or a more immersive combat. And uh, that is something that they might face, they might not, depends on the dice rolls, but there's a lot more in that cupboard that I have to keep hidden from them. So unfortunately, this cupboard stays closed. What's, um, a lot what's, of the, time. what's at the bottom? You've, you've got some terrain in there, that look like you know, gang, gangways and. All yes. So actually, that's in there because I ran out of space. Okay. <laughs> but is that um, is that something you've made yourself or free? No. Game? So this is uh, I can't remember the name of the company. I think it's Big Dumb Games. Right. But these are uh, designed for things like Star Wars Legion and Imperial Assault, and they just link together with these really cool little. Um, clips and even ones that didn't print properly, you can still use because it's just wallless terrain. Yeah, and they all just clip together, and you can make corridors and rooms and stuff. And they really do fill out a table, which yeah. is what we're after realistically. Obviously, those ones are done with rainbow filament, and we haven't finished them yet. But I kind of like it. I love the way that you keep a you keep a spare Ian at the back of the cupboard there. Look. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how you get so much hiding. painting. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, but um, yeah, and like something I will say to anybody who's looking to do a game room or anything like that, all of this, the cupboards and stuff like that, Facebook Marketplace, it was all free because wow, yeah, I was like, I had to do this on a budget, so that's where I scoured and I free free is a good budget, yeah, exactly, because I had to put the budget into things like the cameras, which we'll yeah. talk about shortly because the last of the cupboards is terrain and dragons so minus the ships yeah. at the top there hello hagley these oh, are hagley. a lot of the whiz kids and pathfinders miniatures as well as the D, &D ones yeah and again these are all things that we've just built over time that's been one hell of a journey of just an adult spending their kid money <laughs> but yeah, so we've organized the draws into things like Dragonborns, and then we've got Orcish, and so on and so forth, all the way through all of the fantasy 
builds or uh, characters and NPCs. And we've done the same again down here for the sci-fi, which unfortunately there's not as much for. But yeah. as we move further down, we have our pile of shame, which is in these three boxes here. <laughs> yes, Richard, I do need some warrior print dragons. And we need to talk about that because they're coming up pretty soon. But these are a mix of different terrains. So the left-hand side is all fantasy. And these are all of our little greebles and bits and bobs that we have in there that I'm starting to run out of room for. So everything from like treasure piles to stockades and uh, prison things, mine uh, carts and tracks. And actually, one of those, again, was a really cheap, fun thing to find. You know those tins of trains you get at Christmas? Yeah. They have like a little tiny battery train in there that runs yeah. in a circle. That's one of those. So if you end up with those, they make great minecart tracks on their D&D &D scale. Nice. <laughs> Here we go. Look. Upcycle. That's a top tip. Uh, yeah, I uh, love things like that. And then same again, we've got like loads of different things and just things like tables and stuff like that that we've managed to collect STLs over the years and yeah, be able to get them through and paint them so that we can fill those bits of terrain or those bits of dungeons that are sort of made from things like this, which is the start of our dungeon yeah. tiles. So we've got all of the uh, sewers in those two boxes. That's so cool. The only thing that's not uh, fantasy is our bio-organism dungeon tiles. <laughs> right. <laughs> then that one's empty, and that one is a big pile of shame as well. <laughs> but sci-fi side of things, again, we've got tons of terrain in all of those, which I really need to organize again. It's really messy at the moment. But we've been working wow. on these ones the most, so like... Again, things like vending machines and stuff like that yeah. for those. Yeah, and vending, vending machines are great for filling space. Yeah. And then we have the rest of the terrain, uh, terrain all in yeah. these ones. Projects that I've started and never finished. <laughs> Which is... That happens. Uh, I'm, I'm all fully aware, well aware of those. <laughs> yeah. So I think I started that project about three corridors. years ago. Are they, are they like fan called fanboard corridors or, yeah. or something? Yeah. No, they're corridors. Um, I was actually testing out the, uh, what's it called? Um, the army painter. Yeah, I know you mean. No, the spray paint that they use for their sealer uh, yeah. for foam. So I was like, okay, let's do something like that. And actually, that particular bit was sealed. But I ended up halfway through the can, it got clogged, and I just couldn't unclog it. Right. And it was just, after that, I was like, okay, well, it disheartened and then decided to put it down for a bit. And just haven't picked it back up since. So I will do, but yeah. in time. But behind here, whew, we're getting Even there. more. Wow. So this is my map making area. And you think there's not much room, but actually all of our sets are on wheels. So actually, yeah. before a stream, I will come behind here. And then, minus my recycled piles, which is anything cardboard tubes or anything that I can make something with later on. Yeah. We then have... Was essentially all of our foam terrain, our maps, our piezo maps, then any of the foam boards that we need, or any of the tiles that we've made, or you know, things yeah. like foam beaches and stuff like that. That's cool. Shortly followed by the current two maps that we had out to showcase some players' homes. Yeah. And <laughs> relegated to the corner of my wormwood screen. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and more foam. There is a reason it's in the corner. It's not just been naughty. It's just that with Starfinder being a sci-fi campaign, this is where we talk about the table, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Because this is... Why, why don't you sit down and, and give everyone your view? Yeah, it will do, actually. Get my hockey jersey down. So this is what I see. Minus that board is normally there. That is so cool. So all See, of wouldn't it, wouldn't it, it wouldn't it be nice. I mean, if you if you for those of you who have uh, your own gaming room, this is what it's all about. This is why it looks so so good. But I mean, this is ast astonishing good. It's not just a games room. You've got an entire studio. I'm pretty proud of what I've been able to achieve, and that's my little picture from my youngest kid that lives behind the DM screen. Cool. 
But um, actually, something I haven't done today is my first roll of the day. So I may as well do that now while we're on stream and I'll clip it out later. Um, <laughs> That's a 12 by the looks of things. But yeah, this is nice. the GM screen, which is again from Sorcerman Studios. And yeah. it was just city walls, but I messaged them and said, hey, have you got any chance of building a dice tower into it? And they sent me the files to test print. And that central dice tower is what we had. Is it awesome? Yeah. But the rest of the table with last week's final battle map just sat there and the Starfinder book's ready for the stream, is this. And the artwork on the table is the Great Wheel. And I'll take my charge table off of there. So the Great Wheel, for anybody who doesn't know, and most of you should know, is obviously the planes of existence. So I started with uh, the image, comes from the DMG and also the rest of anything that you play TCRPG, mm -hmm. but there's a page in the DMG that I like that showed all the planes like an old map. So we took that and we started with my first ever homebrew world as the material plane. This is the world of Agarath with the ethereal plane being the silver band that you've got around it and all around here connected yeah. to the Feywild and the Shadowfell. Yeah. And as we come away, we've got the four elemental planes of existence. So we've got air, water, fire and whoops, spin it that way around and your earth nice very nice then we come out a bit further where we've got the outer planes so particularly this one down here and these are all the official glyphs for the 5e versions where this one is your chaotic neutral so where is so this will be the abyss and then round here will be Lawful Evil, which will be the Nine Hells, all the way up to things like Mount Celeste up the top there. Yeah. And then the very, very positive and negative planes around the outside, of which we did all of the writing on here in Draconic. That's cool. Because That's I figured, so cool. being Dragon the Dragonborn Bard, exactly. it has to be in Draconic. <laughs> and then the setup is actually really minimalistic. So we run off of webcams and microphones, which all mm -hmm. run through. And I guess we'll start with the actual soundboard itself. So this is a PodTrack P4, which is a really, really basic podcasting interface, yeah. which runs two shotgun microphones for the players. Yeah. And, and my little, I can abuse it microphone right there. One for you. Yep. Yep, Good. which is, I'm a bit more heavy-handed. The webcams are Logitech Brios on extension yeah. arms, which are attached to the table. So this one looks over at that over particular yeah. board, but also moves for painting up the monster manual, which gets painted here behind yeah. the screen. Then cool. the GM camera is that um, Brio there. And then the Ozbot, which is this PTZ, as we go round, is our map cam. Yeah, nice. and it's really, really simple to operate. And then the last Brio is there. So they're all the cameras and they run into the computer, which is a, a really old, to be honest, computer that this is where the messy cables come in. And my wife will kill me for showing this. But um <laughs> Because I wanted if to keep this everything. This is what it is. This is behind the scenes. This is about behind the scenes as you can get. Yeah. And although I've knocked over my fan there from earlier, um, all of the cables run through the roof. Well, I'll say through the roof, over the truss that we built, and then down here. Because I wanted yeah. to keep, well, I have to keep everything off the floor because uh, we live in the countryside and my saw a thing. And uh, yeah, it's. Um, been one hell of a journey to get to this point. But the final board. I love, I love the fact you got your sci-fi weapons on the back there as well. Yeah. So this is um, something I wanted to do for the studio was to create the innards of some kind of sci-fi building or starship or something. And I knew that the wall behind me, I wanted the armory. And something that Steve spoke about is these down here, the thermite grenades. 
Yes. And yeah, uh, Maverick, player accessible weapons. Uh, that is actually part of the thing. Some people like to have a weapon in hand, and that's kind of what this is. And although this is the ranged weapon wall, I'm hoping that that one will become the melee weapon wall. Nice. We and do have if... a question for you, Ian. Oh, hello. So let's, whoop, let's bring up a question. This is another one, the Geeky Phoenix. The Starfighter streams are great fun. Uh, what would you like to see for the players and future sessions, games, guest NPC actors, voices, video interactions? What would you like? Uh, I would definitely like to get guest players in, especially like if you guys, for the badges that is, do yep. make it down in August and you're there for the Monday, that would be incredible because I would love to be able to, my first ever stream was with you guys, with the Scarlet Citadel, and I'd love to be able to get you guys involved some way, shape or form down here. Obviously, big names like Troy Valley, the whole of Glass Cannon, you yep. know, High Rollers, Mark Humes, Matt Mercer, that'd be amazing. But I'll take the badges I, because I, they were I, first. I don't care. You, you put us first. So, uh, you know, we'll... <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Mr. a reason Mercer that you're and, over and on Troy. that wall. Yeah. There's a reason that you're, you know, you guys gave me my first ever taste of streaming for D&D. &D, and because of that, you are over there. We are for, forever framed. Absolutely, you are. I love it. Yeah. So for what is essentially a shoestring budget, the most expensive thing was the cameras. Yeah. And then the rest of it, actually, something that is really good for anybody getting into this before we talk about the ceiling. These yeah. arms are from newer, N -E 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 -R. up there. Uh, they are like 20 quid, 20, 30 quid, and are well worth it. They are light as anything, and they come with a few attachments. Yeah. Just go with those. They are incredible. And yeah, I... I, I have them as well that I use um, for my camera when, when we're painting. Um, they are great. Very, very solid for for the for the price. Um, they're really strong. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. And yeah, so we've got one over there holding up my painting up the monster manual stuff, and then the one up there. And uh, they're pretty much everything that we need because we had to keep all of the cameras and everything out of the player's line of sight for the GM. We didn't want it to be too intrusive. We didn't want it to be too in the way. And Jack, who plays Kaz actually came up with that and was like, you know, we need to get them up. We need to get them so they're out of the way, the players. And he was so spot on and right about it. And yeah, I'll be ever grateful for that because yeah, beforehand it was just like all the cameras were attached to the table and it was just a nightmare. But uh, yeah. yeah. Is there anything cool. particular? So, minus so, these. <laughs> Do you well, let's talk see? about your, let's talk about the, 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 the ceiling in a second. Just a reminder to everybody, we're going to be going for the, we're going to wrap up in about five minutes. So if there's anything you want to see, questions wise or comments, let us know. Put it in chat. We'll put it up on screen. Get your comments in now. We've got about five minutes. So let's talk. I want to talk about two things, Ian. Uh, the yes. ceiling because it looks amazing, Whoop. but also you've got a stack of uh, Starfinder books there. Um, <laughs> I want to. I want to. Let's talk about those as well. But let's do the ceiling first. And also, Maverick has a question about the room lighting, so I might as well talk about that at the same time as the ceiling. Okay, so uh, the ceiling itself, um, beforehand, this was an art studio, and the ceiling was quite literally white and filled with yellow lighting, which was fine, but I wanted something immersive for both fantasy or sci-fi players, and I found these on Amazon, which again were dirt cheap, and had them put up, uh, which is string and hook screws. Yep. So again, really, really cheap. The lights behind them are by a company called Tapo, and so is that one in the middle. And I can control those and change the colors with my phone. So all of the player lighting, which is the four lights that are behind these and the fifth one in the middle, are completely uh, smart bulbs and able to be changed whenever I need them to be. Yep. And then the rest of the lights in the room, which are these like spherical orbs actually have worked out really well in terms of three-point lighting because they're coming from all angles and we don't need to worry too much about having huge lights everywhere so the only studio light that i've now got is that one there for painting up the monster manual so that i can see what i'm doing that's yeah. cool 
Yeah, and it's uh, so it's very fortunate that the room is already built ready for it. But the pile of books is this here, <laughs> which is almost a complete collection of the Starfinder books. And I think I've got Starfinder enhanced on the way, and there's a couple that I don't have, but I keep these on hand because obviously every Monday we are streaming. And yeah. luckily, Jack, who it plays Kaz, is kind of like me in the sense that we know if something's in, a, in one of the books, we can get to it pretty fast. So it's on the side of the table where either he or I can get to it. And um, yeah, that it's actually kind of a prized possession of mine to just have like a big stack of the same books. Yep. But uh, all of my D&D ones are actually down in the house. I'm, I'm a big fan. I mean, I, I love, for example, we, we play a lot of D&D around the table in Pathfinder. I love having D&D Beyond. But I much prefer having um, the player's handbook, for example, for all the yeah. players to look at. Yep. Rather than when, when I have a player who's on their phone, oh, yeah, I'm just looking it up. It's it's just too small. Get the book. Immerse yourself in the book. Um, yeah. I'm much more of a physical person. I do like them. And I actually agree. Uh, I think any games, especially that Jack and I have played together, we have always had the books to hand on. I think it's on this yeah. page. Go to that one. Check out the spell. Check out this. And it's the same with like, you know, we've tabbed everything there for that we think yeah. we need so that yeah. we can get to it. But it just means that unless it's been eroded, you can just get into them and, yeah, go for it, really. And I, it's... Also, I just I just spotted there. So uh, this has been brought up before, but you've got some signatures on your table. Yeah, this is Eric and Tove from Midnight Tower. Cool. They came down um, in and around the Christmas time. And I was like, look, could you please? Because, you know, big fan and all that. And um, yeah, they did. And I'm hoping that now any time that we get somebody in the studio, and I actually really want my players, if you're listening, to come in and sign this. Because, yeah, yes. I ran out of space in my DMG. Cool. <laughs> Would you, do you, are you going to keep all the signatures in one area or are you going to let your players sign where they sat? I will happily let it go to wherever people want to. Because I think what's fun is I designed the table to be satin and dark. And, yeah. you know, the whole artwork in the middle is is the artwork. But then the rest of it's blank. And actually, I think it'd be really fun for them to do it wherever yeah. they want. And anybody who comes in and plays can add their name to the table and hopefully be part of history, you know? Nice. I love it. I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. That is my little corner of nerdship down here in Cornwall. It is my happy place. Yeah. I, I, can you pan the camera down to your right on the floor? Whoop. Was Was there a spit? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to ask what that was because you nearly tripped over it earlier, didn't you? Is it, is it I did, yeah. That's pee -pop. that's my doorstop plant pot. <laughs> okay, right, right. <laughs> oh, all the, all the stuff. I thought it was right a spit tune as well. No, no. There you go. One whole plant pot for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you that go. Awesome. Well, there we go, folks. We've seen uh, behind the scenes Dragonborn Studios. Ian, just for everybody, when are you streaming live? Uh, so we are back. Uh, I'm just going to quickly flip my camera around, actually, uh, because then we can talk face to face. Whoop. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're back on Monday at 6.30. We have some Starfinder on the go. So we're on episode 13 now. And 13, we... Jesus. Yeah, the crew are now chasing down a lead on a terrorist attack on Absalom Station. But the group they're chasing, a new player has hit the table. So we'll see how that resolves Ooh. on Monday. Me and Richard are back on Thursday for episode 33 of Painting Up the Monster Manual. And um, I can't remember. Oh, it's the Demi Lich, actually. So that'll be a nice. pretty big uh, episode. I think Rich is going to roll a level 15 character for once which will be pretty epic because usually he gets a level three and I kill him in about two turns. Um, then potentially throughout this week, I may be back more often for a few other things, but because the Midnight Tower dice have to take priority at the moment, for their Kickstarter, I'm streaming a little less, but otherwise I'm back with Band of Badgers for mm. Dragonlance in about two weeks, just under, because we're back, baby. 
And I'm, I'm going to say we're level you're, seven. You're gonna, seven. you're gonna love what's gonna come up soon, very, very soon. Um, and that's it. Teaser over. When when Dave says you're gonna <clears> love it, we actually you're gonna hate it. I'm gonna, gonna love it. The audience what? are gonna love it. But you know you're what? Gonna hate it. <laughs> it's a shopping on, episode. Honest. On Thursday when we had uh, Dragon Lights come back, we obviously we painted up a death knight during the day on painting yes. the monster manual. So I know GME and knows it's a CR seventeen creature, and we're only level seven. And it's like, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! But like Fizz is so naive that he's like, let's go fight it. And it's like, oh lucky, man, lucky number seven. <laughs> yeah. So right. that'd be fun. Ian, thank you once again for joining us for My allowing pleasure. the cameras to go behind the scenes. Uh, as always, much love. It's been a pleasure to meet you, to know you. We have met in person. He's not a figment of my imagination anymore. <laughs> uh, we, we've met several times now. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to, to doing whatever comes out of this year, 2024. Let's bring it on. Yeah. Um, the year of the dragon. That so anybody born this year is the dragonborn. Exactly. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. Right. And that's it. We're going to see you next time, everyone. See ya. Bye. Bye.